So in part two of this series, what we're going to be working on is um, detecting if the game is over. And there's going to be two ways that the game is actually going to end. Uh, the first is if all the squares on the tic-tac-toe board are filled up. And the second is if one of the players actually wins. So I think the easiest way to do this is just creating a function. So we'll go right here between the while loop and the redraw game window. And we'll say def, um, we'll say is game over. And so inside of here, what we're going to be checking to see is if is if the um, all of if none of the values inside of this list up here that we called board vals equals zero. So if they're all one or negative one, the game will be over. And then also if there's three in a row of a, of the same value, then the game will be over. So the first way is we'll just we're going to loop through it. So we'll say for i in board vals. And then we'll say for j and i. So j is actually going to be the, so i is going to be um, either the first, second, or third list inside of that um, bigger list. I guess this is called a dictionary in Python. And then j is the specific value, whether it's negative one, zero, or one. Okay, so the way we're going to do this is whenever we check j, if, so the way that we'll know the game is over is if we go through every single individual value of the list and if none of them are zero that means the board is full and the game has to be over so right before here we're gonna say like zero found is gonna equal false and if if um, j is equal to zero then zero found will be true and so then after this for loop if not zero found so if we go through this uh, this for loop and we don't come across any zeros, that means the board has to be full. Uh, full. And so we're actually just going to return true, meaning the game is over. And then the second way the game is going to be over is by having a player actually win. So the way we can check that is going to be similar to what we did up here. We're going to have to loop through them, but there, this is going to be kind of a tedious, tedious part of the code because there's lots of different combinations, like there's three different horizontal ways someone can win, three vertical ways, and then the two diagonal ways. So let's start off with, um, let's start off with the horizontal, horizontal check. So we'll say for i in board vowels, like we did earlier, and then we are going to say for, we'll say if i of zero, is equal to i of 1 and i of 0 is equal to i of 2 then it um, will return true and we also just have to make sure that i of 0 is not we're not checking to see if they're all empty so and i of 0 does not equal um, zero. So if i of zero equals i of one and i of two, and th the value of i of zero is not zero, so if it's like actually one meaning x's or negative one meaning o's, then one of the players must have won the game. So we'll return true. We can, we can copy this. We'll go down here, we'll say elif, and then paste that in there. And then instead of saying, um, actually no. So that's gonna that that'll actually take care of the horizontal checks, and then so let's comment that and just kind of label it so horizontal win, and then we'll go down here and we'll let's do vertical. So vertical is gonna be a little bit different. And the way we're gonna check the vertical is if the first value of each list um, is the same, or this middle value, or the last value. And so the way we can go about doing that is by hard coding it in there. So what we're going to do is this one's going to be a little bit longer, but we're actually just going to write out and say if if um, board vowels of 
of zero and then zero is equal to board vowels of of one and zero and we can copy this and paste it and say instead of so we'll say zero zero and then we'll say two zero and then we'll just make sure that that value is not the value of zero that it actually equals one or zero or negative one so then we'll say if board vows of zero zero does not equal zero then we'll return true because then the game has to be over and we can copy this line of code and then we can do it again but instead of saying instead of making the second index zero we'll just change them all to ones and then we'll do this one more time copy and paste it and we'll change all the ones to twos except for the, this one right here we'll just make that a two so all the second indexes need to be two and so now we'll return true if an either player won vertically and then the last check we have to do I think we're gonna hard code that as well so we can skip a line we'll do diagonal check and we are going to paste this in there and we're gonna check if zero zero is equal to one one and zero zero is equal to two two and that zero zero does not equal zero we'll return true and then the other way we have to do this let's copy this paste it in there and we're gonna say if 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 zero two is equal to one one, and if zero two is equal to two zero, and this will check the diagonal going from the top right to the bottom left. So these are all the different possible ways of the game actually ending. <coughs> so in order to kind of check that in the while loop, what we'll do is at the very end. Well, let's actually just go to the very top and we'll say, we can just give, do a variable call it game over. We'll create a variable and call it game over and we'll say it equals false by default so that the game can start on launch or like whenever you run it. And what we're actually gonna do is all the code from mouse X down to here, we're gonna tab it all over and we're gonna say, if not game over. And at the end of it, at the end of this if statement, outside of all the, so just like only, and so at the end of this if statement where we're checking if it's not game over, we are going to call the function, we'll say game over is gonna equal is game over. And so if it returns true, then this while loop will stop running, but the game will still be um, functioning. So let's, but it just won't let us actually add any new squares any new pieces so let's run it and make sure that's working well so if I start off put an X here and then an O here okay so there's something wrong with it let me find what the bug is and then get back to you guys all right so I found the things that need to be fixed in order for the code to run properly basically um, right here I previously had this as zero zero but you want to change that to where it's checking zero two and then you also just want to add um, return false to the bottom so that if none of the checks show that the game has ended it'll the game will realize that the game still isn't over basically so when we run this we start the game normally so we'll go x o x o x and then if i try going anywhere else it returns game over and so the game doesn't continue so that'll get the game over function working properly all right, so the next thing that we're going to be working on is adding some text to the side of the screen. So as you can see here in the window, we have this extra black space. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say whose turn it is. And I'll display text if the game is over or if X1 or O1. So let's go inside of the redraw game window. 
and what we'll do is we're going to create a font so we can just go up here and say font equals pygame dot font dot sys font and we'll just do Arial. you can pick any font that you like and we'll give it a size of 50 and what we'll do next is we'll display we will display um, like whose turn it is so we'll say like turn text and we will set that equal to font dot render and we're going to pass in what should we pass in as the text so we want to pass in x if the move count is even and then we want to pass in o if it's odd so actually before we do this line let's go a line before and say turn is going to equal Hmm. Okay, we'll do this. We'll do if move count percent two is equal to zero, turn equals x, and then else turn equals o. Make them capital. And then so in here we will say turn plus um, an apostrophe, well, let's go double quotes, apostrophe s, and then turn. And we're gonna just pass in a one, and then the color of it will be, we'll make it white. So 255, 255, 255. And then we actually have to blit that on the screen, which is like kind of drawing it. So we'll say when dot blit turn text and we need to pass in a point for where we, where we want that to be. So let's pass in screen width, which will give us the width of the display screen. And then we're gonna subtract turn text width. So turn text dot get width. Width. And then we'll subtract like another 10 pixels just to kind of space it out a little bit. And then for the Y, we will do the same thing. Well, so we'll start off, it'll be at the top, and then we're just gonna drop it down about 10 pixels. So we'll just say 10. So that should be good. And let's run this and see what happens. So right now it's X's turn. My goats O's X, O, X, O, X, O. And then perfect, so now the game ended. So next what we wanna do is add game over text. So below that, We'll go in here, and what we'll do is we will say if game over, we're going to have game over text, and that'll be set equal to font dot render. Um, font dot render, and then we'll just we'll just say game over for now. So game over. We'll pass in a one and make that white as well. So 255, 255, 255. And then we will blit that on the screen. So win dot blit. And we'll put game over text. And we'll pass in a point. So we'll do screen width minus game over text dot get width. And then minus 10 again. And then for the Y, we'll just say. So we will do because the text above it is going to be the like the turn text and that one's at 10 plus the height of it and so we want to do like 20 plus um, turn text dot get height to make sure there's space between them so now when we run that we get here we go play again okay so now it's it's displaying it's just overlapping with the board so let's just make the font a little bit small actually we can just add a new line right here so we can just say we can just do that and let's see if that solves it um okay i guess new line characters don't work in in the text views but that's fine so instead of saying new line what we'll do is we will just make the fonts smaller so let's go up here to font 
let's copy that line, paste it, and then we'll name this like font too. We'll just say like small fonts. And we will make it like 25, for example. And then so down here in game over text, instead of saying font.render, we'll do small fonts. Dot render. So now let's try that out and see how it looks. So X, O, X, O, X. There's game over. Um, I guess we can space it out a little bit more. So we'll just go right here. So instead of saying minus 10, we'll go like minus 50. That'll look a little bit better. So, okay, like minus 35. I think that'll be fun. So next what we're gonna work on is allowing the player to play again without having to like close the close the game and then reopen it. So for now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna let the player play again by pressing space and then later on we can just move all that um, code into like a button press. But for now space will just be a little bit easier. So what we're gonna have to do is we are going to go inside of this while loop and above the for loop right here, we're gonna just say, we're gonna say keys is gonna be equal to pi game dot key dot get underscore pressed. Let's fix that. And so what this is gonna do is it's gonna create a list of all the keys that have been pressed since the um, game was run. And so we'll say if keys um, of pi game dot k and then we'll set it to space then we are going to set game over to f equal to false we are also going to empty both of the lists so we'll s or wait, let's see what they were called so we have board valves and pieces on board so we want to make both of those empty so we'll say board valves dot clear and then we will say pieces on board dot clear so what this will do is it will um, clear all the spots on the board right so if we run this and I click a couple of squares and somebody wins and I press space it still thinks the game is over let's try moving game over equals false uh, down here and seeing if that makes a difference Let's run it. Um, oh, okay, okay. So we don't actually want to clear board valves. We want to set it, we want to reset it equal to what it was initialized at, which was this, where it was just all zero. So we can just copy that and then go back down, say board valves equals an empty, or just a, a three by three list of zeros. Okay, so now when we go for it, and then we press space, we can just play again. Um, so I guess we should just also add um, move count equals zero so that X will go again. We'll go first again in the new game. And that's basically how you implement the logic for playing multiple games. So I guess all that's left really is just to add the code for the bot that we're going to be playing against.